Hi everyone, and welcome back. This is going to be the fourth installment of my Frozen Solitude series. Today we're working on the midground trees. Now before I get started, I'm just going to point out that I went ahead and put in the foreground there on the left side uh, so that we'll have something on which to put our trees today. Now it's done the same way that I did the shoreline on the uh, right side and I've brought the, the land all the way down to the front left of the canvas. Now I do all of my trees basically the same way. I like to do them with a small round brush and sometimes a filbert but in this case I'm just going to stick to the round brush. I start by putting in the trunk and then I slowly pick away at the leaves starting at the top and working my way down. A lot of this video is going to be pretty monotonous, I want to say, because I do the trees the same way. It's just a matter of repeating the process and changing the shapes, the overall shapes of the trees, uh, subtly to get some variation. I don't like to have uh, the trees looking like cardboard cutouts of each other. <laughs> Uh, you know, just different sizes, but, uh, you know, variety is a good thing. Some of the trees have uh, a little bit more of a bushy appearance, and some of them are a little bit more sparse, but I don't want these to call too much attention to themselves because they are in the middle ground, sort of behind the main focus of our composition here. I don't believe Bob highlighted these when he did his version, but I am going to put some highlights on them. I was torn when I get to that point because I really like the way they look like this, but at the same time I wanted to integrate them with the rest of the painting and I felt that a little bit of highlighting was called for. Of course, I haven't gotten anywhere near that point yet. We're still working on laying in the first tree. <laughs> so now for the second one, again, starting with the trunk. I don't necessarily need to put the whole trunk in there because most of it is going to be covered up with branches, leaves. Uh, but sometimes I'll do it, like here, for example. I like to have a little bit of trunk showing at the bottom. The middle of the tree isn't really necessary. As long as I see the top of it and I see the bottom of it, I'm good. So again, we've got more, more uh, leaves being put in, more branches. Again, this is a very small round brush. I believe that's a number two. I don't just, you know, pick away at the tree. I like to flesh it out, almost as though I'm just constantly verifying visually how the weight of the tree is affecting me in the way I, uh, the way I perceive it, if it feels balanced or not. So you'll see me jump around sometimes. I just go back up and add a few more leaves just because I feel like the overall balance of the tree is off. That's just me. Now you may have noticed already that my mountains and my water line are not blending with the darker tone that I'm putting in here. And that is because I've given the painting a solid week and a half. It might have even been two weeks, um, but it's at least a week and a half sitting here uh, dry. So I'm able to put my finger on the, pan on, the, uh, on the canvas there like that. And I'm able to put in my trees without having to worry about them picking up the, uh, the paint from behind them. So again, this is all dry. This has been sitting for about a week and a half to two weeks. Now you can see there where I left the middle of the tree open. I just didn't see any point in putting the 
trunk in there when I knew I was going to just fill it in with tree leaves, branches and leaves. I'm still using the same brush. This is still the same number two. It is a very soft sable brush, very similar to mine actually, just a little smaller. My brush is a four. It's a little bit bigger and I believe I used it for the foreground trees. Can't really remember at this time. <laughs> it was a few months ago that I did this. So then I'm being very picky with the top of the tree, making sure that the shape of it is just how I want it before I keep going down. <clears throat> I don't see any reason to rush this. Make sure that the leaves are all properly shaped. Make sure the tree is balanced. Making sure that it doesn't look too much like the other two, otherwise it's going to look like I just copied a pattern onto the canvas. Now you see there I went down through the center of the tree and now I'm fleshing it out. You can really do this any way that makes sense to you. That's just what happened to make sense to me at the time I did that tree. You can see how I've filled it out. It's looking a lot better now. Moving on down to the bottom. I like to pull the branches out you know, start in the middle and just work them out towards the edges. I feel like that's a great way to build the body of the tree and make the branches look natural. And they do look pretty good like this. I probably could have left them alone just like this and it would have been fine. But, you know, you make a decision and you go for it. And the end result is what it is. Putting in some bushes here. I didn't have to do this, I just felt like it needed something there. So here comes another bush. Again, this is all the same brush, the same number two sable. And now for tree number four. Again, this is the same procedure. Put the trunk in, and I'm using that, that, uh, that mall stick there to stabilize my hand so that I can get a nice straight line. And then I start picking away at the tree from the top and working my way down. More of the same. Now pay close attention, we've got a nice close up here. Pay close attention to the way I'm manipulating the brush. So it's a bunch of quick little swipes. Sometimes I pull, sometimes I just tap it. Sometimes it's a combination of all three. Just slowly, slowly, slowly going down and filling that tree out. The whole time I'm checking it up against the other trees, checking it against itself and making sure that the shape feels right. None of this for me is an arbitrary process where I just sort of tap the tree leaves in and hope for the best. <laughs> I'm being very meticulous about where those leaves go. And the whole point is to end up with a tree that feels natural, feels nice, has a good flow to it, good rhythm, a good sense of uh, fullness without it looking too much like it uh, originated from a pattern. And you can even see on this one I've changed the tone a little bit. The bigger one is darker, and this one is a little bit lighter than all three of the trees that I have done so far. I did that on purpose just to make it look like it was a little bit farther away. It's funny because when you when you end up highlighting these things, you kind of lose that. 
In retrospect, I think I probably should have left the trees alone like this without any highlights. It would have been closer to Bob's, but you'll see uh, later on when I put the other trees in and I start highlighting them, these just looked out of place. They really did, and I wanted to make sure that I integrated them into the painting, so I went back and put some highlights on them later. But at this point, all I'm concerned about is the shape and the way the silhouette uh, sits in front of that mountain. I was beginning to feel like the bottom of it felt a little bit too sparse. So I just started adding bushes down there and I lost my tree trunks. It is okay. I don't mind losing some tree trunks to make the overall effect look better. Once again, same process. In the video here, I've edited quite a few times to skip ahead, like right there, just to give you the gist of what's going on without having you sit here and watch me do every brush stroke, because pretty much every one of these brush strokes is exactly the same. With this tree, I've gone ahead and made the tone darker again. This tree's getting a little bit less density in the middle. Just a great way of making it look like this tree is in front of the other one. It's darker, it's taller. And it looks like it's in front. few more branches. You can see I'm really paying attention to the shapes of the branches. I'm not just randomly dropping in shapes. It's a, a very controlled, very intentional set of marks that uh, brings out the character of the trees. Now what I'm doing is I'm just using the tone that I had on the brush to integrate the trees into the ground. And I'm doing that because it looked as though my trees were darker than the ground and that doesn't really make all that much sense visually. So I'm just taking some of that darker tone and working it into the ground to make it look like the trees are actually sitting there. You can use this kind of technique to make it look like the trees have shadows. If you just pull the, pull the, the uh, shadows out along the ground. Now I've moved over to the uh, right hand side of the canvas and I'm just going to add some trees over here. Bob's painting doesn't have them, but I felt like I needed to do something over there and not just leave it empty. I can't say I put too much thought into that. I just looked, you know, I, I backed up and I looked at the painting and I said, you know what, it needs something over there on the edge. So here we go. Very basic shapes. Now these I did not highlight. As soon as I finished these here, they're done. I don't think I ever went back to them. I know I didn't highlight them. And uh, that's good because you don't want everything looking the same everywhere. And like I said before, the only reason I go back and I add highlights to the trees on the left is because they just didn't look right after I had put the ones in front of them, the bigger ones in the foreground. They just looked out of place and I felt like they needed some highlights. So I did some highlights. There's nothing different about the way these trees are being done. It's exactly the same. I'm just using different tones different values, just to make sure they look like they're really in the spot I'm painting them. If I make them too dark or I make them too light, they're not gonna look like they're sitting there. Something's gonna be off about that. When, when someone looks at the painting, they're gonna think, huh, something's weird. 
And maybe they don't notice. Maybe they don't notice. What's weird is that the, the trees aren't the right value. You see, that one looks kind of dark compared to the ground. So here I am going over the ground and putting a little bit of darkness there. Now this one, I wanted to set it way back in that, uh, that little valley there between the two ridges. So this one is very light. I did not want this one to look like it was sitting on the ground. I wanted it to look like it was behind that ridge. So it has to be lighter in value than the, the top of that, uh, that little peninsula there. And uh, this is about as far as I'm going to go in the video. The next one is going to start covering the, the foreground trees. So we'll just watch me do this for a little bit longer and uh, then we'll move on. One last little tree in there. That little guy really helps. All right, well, thanks for watching. Next up, we have the uh, large trees and some highlights.